no, 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 no. CPU. For some reason, my chat has not been working on Streamlabs, so I can't see if someone's chatting us. It looks good. All right, let me see the tweets. Yeah, my face is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want your face nice up and up close and center, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, mine, mine's all laggy. I have no idea why. Could be me. Entirely no, it was. No, no. As in, just watching it on roll twenty. It's all. Gotcha. All glitchy. All right. Well. Can't use my filters. <laughs> All right, well, we can get started. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 11 of Adventure with Advantage. Um, recap from last week, or not last week, two weeks ago, last episode. Previously, the party arrived in Silver Ridge and met up with Casimir Silverlash, uh, the Goblin Gazette reporter who they were sent to assist. He informed them that Graston Silverblood, the dwarf in charge of Silver Ridge, uh, is the one who would not allow them to enter the mine, so they made their way to the Silverblood Manor to speak with him. Graston informed them that the miners had tunneled into an existing Underdark tunnel system and some of the miners had gone missing. He agreed to allow the party into the mine, only if they were willing to clear out the remaining monsters that had made their way into the mine. He also offered to pay them handsomely should they eliminate the creature or creatures that were abducting the miners and wanted them return to return any miners they could save. Party agreed and made their way into the mine, but not before Levy and Casimir got themselves some very stylish helmets. Uh, once inside the mine, they encountered some creatures that were able, they were able to eliminate, but soon a creature that appe who appeared to be a brain with legs attacked Levy, who was stunned from the attack. Uh, Casimir was able to kill the creature before it could do any more harm. The party notified the dwarven guards that they had cleared out the creatures and made their way out of the mine with Steel, steel Scar, carrying an unconscious Levy, hoping they could find a way to help him. And I believe where we picked up or left off was you guys had just exited the mine, uh, and Steel Scar was carrying an unconscious levy. Um, so like a, like a princess. Like a princess. Oh, he always wanted. Uh oh, just lost. Hold me. All right. So with that, levy. The last thing you remember is the brain creature launching some sort of assault on your mind, and you fell into blackness. You now sit in blackness, though you can't determine how long you've been sitting in this blackness. Maybe a few seconds, or perhaps a millennia. As you stare into the nothingness, you see something emerging from the darkness. As its features become more defined, you soon see yourself standing before you, but you know it's not you. The not you speaks. It is not our time. You want to speak, but you can't. You want to move, but your body won't respond. The not you speaks again. We have much work to do. The not you reaches out and places its hand on your face. A dark pulse moves up their arm toward your face as they shout, Wake up! You awaken, Levy, with a loud breath. <gasps> as you get your bearings, you see a sky above you, the wind blowing against your skin, and steel scars carrying you in his arms. Oh, oh, hey, buddy. Uh, what happened? What, what? I'm flattered, but uh, what's going on? Levy, are you all right? You, you went unconscious on us. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Some, some brain thing. I don't know. It, it was black everywhere. I just only saw blackness, and then just suddenly came to. It was weird. Are you able? Are you able to walk? Or should we? We were gonna take you to maybe a. Uh, a cleric, see if they could help you out. I, I, I don't know. I, can you put me down? I gently put him down on his oh. feet. Thank you. All right, yeah, I think I'm pretty good. I think I'm pretty good. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I'll be all right. I don't know. That was weird, man. W what happened? You, We were in the middle of combat, and you just... All I saw was, like, drool coming out your mouth. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought I was able to like avoid its attack, but 
just it just went through and just hit me anyway. So <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, um, we ended up clearing all the all the monsters in the in the mines, but I I let the guards know to not blow up the actual entrance to the uh, to the hole we saw because. You never know. There might be innocent people down there that we could rescue. So we tried to bring you back to town to try to uh, fix your situation. So depending on how you're feeling, we could just go back in or actually talk to a cleric and see if there's anything else wrong with you. Uh, no, no, no. We, we let's go back in. Let's 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 continue. This is uh, this is. This is, well, anything for the story, man. Anything for the story. We gotta. We're on a mission here. All right, just, got a just job hold on a second. I uh, I yeah, put up like here, I wait. put up like a finger. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, can you just follow my finger? See, like you know how they do like the drunk test. I'm like, yes. I just have to follow my finger. All right, hey, real quick, uh, I need to reconnect so that I can get um, APOC. So let me do that real quick. He's. Oh he's, oh, he's completely left. Okay. Well, he had... Uh, can you guys see him? Nope. Okay. No. Not yet. Let me know if one of you guys can see him, because mine doesn't seem to... We might all have to try to disconnect. Um, and reconnect. Yeah. I'm going to try to... Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties no, on the stream. Let me reconnect. I can see the only one I can't see is Steel Scar and Levy. That's see. so random because everybody can Sorry. see people. So can you guys see <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the hassle, sorry you're, about that. Oh ah. Alright. I mean Okay. There we I mean, go. I can see everyone except Steel Scar. You guys can see him? Yep, I can Steel see Scar right now. again. I don't again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo. There we go. All right, sweet. We got everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got confirmations over here on my end that it's all good. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I got the stream on the other okay. monitor. Sweet. All right, so Casimir, if you didn't catch some of that, Levy had basically just woken up from his stupor. Um, and Steel Scar, I believe, was running some field tests. I, I was like running my finger, telling him to follow my finger with my eyes, see if everything was good with him. You draw a line in the sand and have him walk the line. Well, uh, well, I'm only running that because I am proficient in medicine, so I wanted to see if he was good. Oh, then go ahead and roll a medicine check. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, 15 plus 18 total. 18. Okay. Um, you get the sense that, yeah, when you were holding him, you're, he was out, it seemed, but from what you can tell, he seems fine. All right. Something seems to have roused him from his stupor. So does he seem more or less, like, closer to his old self before he passed out on us? Levy, do you feel to your old self before you passed out on them? Um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. All right. All right. I, wanted, I was checking how much HP I had lost. So, yeah, yeah, I, I feel okay. <laughs> All right. That, and so I'm like, yeah, Levy, uh, Levy seems pretty good from this little test I just took. So if we do want to pursue, I would, I, I would say it's good to go down the hole again. All right. So you guys want to head back in the mine and continue onward? Yeah, so, um... Alright. Well, I didn't ever change down the map. Down into the darkness. Never change the map, so... Back so, while we're, while we're going down, can I just, uh... Can I just say that I, like, drink one of my potions of healing? Sure, if you want to. Or you guys can take a rest, whatever you want to do. Well, I'm still gonna take it. That's fine, go ahead and take it, then. Um, Alright. Ooh, nice. It's it's uh two D four plus two, right? Two D four plus two, yeah. Awesome. For, uh, small, whatever the just regular Yeah, yeah, it's the smaller ones. Okay. Ooh, nine points of healing for me. <laughs> Alright, so you guys 
after kind of, you know, taking a breath, Levy getting back on his feet, you guys turn around and head right back inside the mine. Um, yeah, we want to go a short rest. Are you you want to take a short rest? Oh, I just don't know sure. how long a short rest is. That's one of the an things hour. that's new for me. It's an hour. It's an hour. Okay. I would say we could take a short rest right before we jump down the hole. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm All awesome. Ready. All right, so you guys head back down in the mine. Um, uh, where's my music? Guy? Short rest. There you go. All right, so you guys enter back into the Silver Ridge mine. Kind of like the guards are kind of surprised to see you as you walk in. They're kind of like, oh, oh, I thought he was, um, okay. Uh, and so you guys kind of make your way back inside, um, over to the lift, I'm assuming, you just went ahead, make your way back to that hole, to the Underdark. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so you guys basically... Let's go. Uh, so yeah, you head your way back through the mine, um, over to the, the lift. Um, at this point, uh, you know what to do. You tell the guards to lower you down in the mine. You guys head down um, and make your way back up to where you find uh, Doloth, who is the dwarf in charge. And uh, who's the other guy? I can't find his name. Oh, well, the um, the foreman of the mine. Um, they're, he, the foreman's not over by the guards, which are near the entrance. Um, but Doloth is standing there. They're kind of just patrolling, you know, doing what they can to make sure if something were to come through, they'd be ready. You know, small fortifications that they can do. Um, and as you approach, he kind of sees Levy. He's like, oh, I, I thought you were injured, lad. Seems you've made a recovery. Uh, no. Yep, I'm I'm fine. Right as rain. Just, well, that's good to hear. Are you making your way down in the mine now? Or into the tunnel? Is that your plan? Uh, I believe that's the, that's the plan of action. Yep. Yeah. All right. It's like we will wait let's, here. Let's head that way. What was that? Quick, let's head that way then. Um... So uh, we're gonna we're gonna rest before we get in that hole, right? Yeah, we're taking the short rest. All right, he's like, um, okay. Yes, take whatever uh, rest you need to take before you head down in there. The underdark can be a dangerous place, so go prepared, as I'm sure you have already discovered. So you guys are gonna go ahead and take yep. a short. Yep. Uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the hallway should be cleared, though. Yeah, you guys have cleared out. They had cleared out everything. Oh, there's still a guy up here. Let me get rid of him. Uh, yeah, we, said, we cleared out all the all the monsters in the cave. Yep. So, DM, like, during our short rest, I want to inspect the hole. Is there, like, a rope going down, or is there anything, or is it, like, just so a... it's not a rope. It's just, it's a hole in the wall. Basically, okay. they uh, were tunneling, you know, forward, and then they just ran into an existing tunnel system. Uh, and from where you're standing, kind of, like, not walking in, but just kind of peeking in, you know, not sticking your head through, but where you can see, you just kind of see this faint blue glow um, from that area coming from the hole. If you do recall, I stuffed corpses in the hole, so we yeah, got to move did. those. It was just <laughs> corpses of the Grimlocks are just piled up in front Lovely. of the hole. Lovely. <laughs> I forgot so. about that. Oh, that looks, that looks interesting, guys. <laughs> Um, like the, right um, while we rest, I'll song of rest, by the way. You can do song of rest? Oh, yeah, so if you guys... So, uh, so he's uh, going to take a short rest, which yeah, would be... Song of rest. So you can roll a hit die to get back as much hit points as you want to for those who are below, and then Levy is going to do song of rest, which gives you what? extra hit points. How many extras? Uh, I think it's a 1d8. I don't remember. I think it's 1d8 at this point. I think so, something like that. I'm full. Get one d six extra. One d six. It's a d six. Yeah. Oh, I'm full then. Cool, and I get ten back. Sweet. And oh, well, then, does that duh. put you at max, Casimir? Yes. Okay. Because you can spend more than one hit die to heal. During yeah, total rest. of five, I think. Yeah, it's up to whatever your level is. And then when you take a long rest, you get like I think it's half of your hit die back. After oh wow rest. that's spectacular or, oh, sorry after a long rest so um all right so you guys take your rest levy plays a nice relaxing tune on his what drums flute flute this is war drums right um 
Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a drum and a flute. So I guess this one will probably be a flute. There you you go. know, <laughs> be. I'll, I'll do some, uh, some, some relaxing beats. To, you know, relax or study to. Lo-fi. <laughs> Hip hop lo-fi beats to relax and study. Lo-fi. <laughs> uh, all gonna be lo-fi. Nice. All right, yeah. so you guys. Yeah, that's what I'm playing. You guys rest for about an hour and feel relaxed. You feel the kind of the magic, refreshing of levy's music kind of like gets you ready uh, and you guys are all at max health at this point um what would you like to do so i want to uh dm i want to inspect the hole would it be easy for if we climb down would it be easy for us to climb back up or would, would so it, it look like, a, it's, like oh, walking, it's, it's the equivalent of walking through a door it's oh, okay. Okay. there's no hole okay. below you i thought it's, it was like down okay no, it's not down i'm sorry that's kind of what it looks like it's like walking through a door okay gotcha. got it I just I look at the rest of the guys and I'm like, ah, are we ready, guys, to uh, to push in, see what we find down there, maybe find some survivors? Yeah, let's do it. Right, let's me, hope. Let me, give me I, a second to make sure that my um my fog of war is on. <laughs> yeah, right, so it's I I so um, I will push in in front of the group. All right. I'll go sure, guys. Him. Uh, for those two, um, can I cast protection from evil and good on it? Who? Uh, our two tanky people, Casimir and um, Steelscar. Yes. What is that spell? Uh, it it it's the uh, <laughs> the anti-brain. <laughs> evil. Yeah, I just want to see how long it lasts and if it's ten minutes. Before ducking through, I also asked Levi to refresh the light on my head. My uh, gloriously fancy helmet. <laughs> Levy, you mean? Um, um, Levy, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can try, but like I refresh his. Uh, yeah, I, I hopefully uh, don't botch his name <laughs> in game. <laughs> Wait, so you refresh yours, but his goes out, right? No, I believe you can have like three. Yeah, light because you can, only, you can only. It's a one source according so to. So uh, when it's a light spell, right? Yes. So when you're when so yeah, this light. is what I'll do. When he refreshes Casimir's, but then he does his and Casimir's goes out, I'll touch Casimir's headlamp and I'll cast the light spell on it so that he can have it too. I don't cool. think I don't think it goes out, but alright. Yeah. He can have up to three going at a time, I think. And Elamir, so protection from evil and good is a concentration spell, which it's, means you can only yeah, have one. one going. Oh it's oh, one okay. it's it's one object. It's not that what you're thinking of is dancing lights. Oh, is it? Is light only yeah. one? Light is only one object. Okay. I was wrong. So, so yeah, so yeah. when he does that and, and Casimir's goes out, then I'll cast light on Casimir, so right. he has light too. Sounds gotcha. Good. Okay. If I can only do one, I'll give it to Steel Scar since he's in front. Okay. I right, so Steel Scar, you, Elamir walks up and casts a spell on you. Oh. Oh. Okay. And I just say, protect your brain, and then I leave. <laughs> You touch him on the head. <laughs> right in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me switch the map over. All right. Make sure you jack it off. Okay, good. It's pitch black. Loading <laughs> player transport. Oh, no. I can't see. What happened? I'm done. Be blind. I thought you'd be great. Spell. If the music he had Am lined I up was just again? like the heavy metal guys, from Doom. Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. All right. Um, it is called Ever Dark, right? Bam. No, Under Dark. Under Dark. That's but it's that Forever Dark. <laughs> yes. All right. So let me do this, and I'll move your tokens over. I forgot to copy those guys over. Give me one second. Object. Oops. Underground. Escape. There we go. All right, guys. I'm not unconscious again, right? <laughs> no, no. It's it's pretty dark down here. <laughs> All right. So let me make sure it looks good. Okay. Good. okay I'm just checking. All right. So let me go to my notes. So you guys so, take a, so your step forward into the underdark and kind of like as you guys are just as you're entering, Doloth is like, "Good luck down there. We will um." We'll stay here and make sure it stays safe, and you'll have a way out. We'll be waiting. 
I look back at them and I'm like, yes, um, just keep an eye out. Uh, we're going to try to see if we can find any uh, survivors down here. We'll prioritize getting them out, getting them out first before anything else. He sounds, sounds like a plan. And then he kind of salutes you and I salute back. back. All right. <laughs> and goes back to guard. All right. So you guys enter into the Underdark. Um, here's what you guys see. It's dark. Yes. Very dark. The so before the the rock and stone seemed um, kind of I don't know what you're used to seeing kind of like typical rock and stone here as you enter it's just like dark it's kind of like wet and moist and just um, it's just it's like stepping into a different world at, as you enter through the the doorway for lack of a better word. Um, and so Steel Scar, as you are kind of up in front, you kind of make your way down this hall. Oh, I lost Steel Scar. Anyone else lose him? Uh, yes. Yeah, he just dropped. He's coming, uh, yeah. He's coming back. He's Everyone did. Like a zombie. Let me know if you see him, because I don't have him. Back from the dead. Is his video back? Yeah. It's back for us. All right, let me reconnect. Hope I get him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bam, oh. got everyone. Sweet. There we go. All right. Uh, so you enter, and yes. again, so there's kind of this dull blue glow that you're able to see. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check to see what you can see ahead of you. Yes, sir, I can do that for you. Do Sorry. our lights help at all? 17. Uh, they, you don't have disadvantage on your <laughs> reception check. Yes. Well, oh, well, I have dark vision, so... He has dark vision, so the, the light goes out, I think, what is it, 20, is it 20 feet? bright light and like 20 feet dim light past that or something like that. Uh, it's 20 feet it's 20 feet for regular and then 20 feet dim after that okay so yeah it actually lights up a decent portion of this room so i have dark vision so i yeah, should be so good see so from where you're standing you can see um you hear the sound of water running um just kind of this low kind of shh of water just running um and again, the room up ahead of you is just kind of lit by this dull blue that isn't lit by Levy and Levy and your um, light spell. Um, and you can also kind of see like a pool of water. It seems is up in the room ahead of you, and kind of like a trail of water that goes across the path. That right there. Yeah, that's kind of the trail of water. I just be like, I hear water up ahead. Like everything that I'm saying is more like a whisper, not like yeah. loud. Okay. Um. I hear like a water stream up ahead. We might be, might be like an underwater stream or something. And I, I s slowly will make my way up like stealthing. So I guess I'll roll stealth. This event. Yeah. Oof. That is no bueno. It's only a 12. Yeah. All right, so Steel Scar, you move up there. You feel like you're pretty quiet. Everyone else just kind of hears Steel Scar kind of chick 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 as he's moving up. <laughs> oh no! I love how you guys send the tankiest guy up front to scout. Well, I mean, I'm the one that's taking up <laughs> damage, so yeah. Actually, I'm pretty sure his stealth outclasses mine significantly. <laughs> I have a plus seven in stealth. Paladin oh, stealth. Gosh. I I think I, I actually oh, I have a, I have a plus struggle. one. <laughs> Knowing he's ten times better at it than he oh, is. Oh god! I have a plus four. I stealth up to him and sneak up on him and be like, "You're doing great," and then I stealth away. <laughs> Completely silent. Steel Scar can hear you move up. Yeah, when he does, like, if he, no, because I'll hear him say that, so I'll just be like. <laughs> All right. So what you can see. Um, so you see the room ahead of you. You see a waterfall, not a huge waterfall, but just water making its way through this underground system into this pool of water um over here in the corner you see this kind of like the light seems to be emanating from this weird bioluminescent sort of mushroom type thing um and Pretty. yeah the water again is coming from that and you see the water kind of crosses over the path it's not super thick or i'm sorry deep um and then it heads over and then kind of like goes down um, and you can't really see where it heads down to, but you can see that as well. There is a path up ahead of you right here on the other side. Um, and what you can see 
over the waterfall, or where the water's kind of disappearing, as you do also see what looks like a path that's leading this way. Can I, like, push up to this bioluminescent thing and see what it is, like investigate it or something? Yeah. Um, I'd roll a nature check. Nature, nature, nature. Okay, can I follow it stealthily? Yeah, I'd roll <laughs> stealth. <laughs> All right, I'll roll a nature uh, check for it. Sorry. 17? 17. All right, you're able to just sneak right up yeah. and steal Scar without him even knowing. All right, so nature, 19 minus 1, 18. 18, okay. Um, looks like a mushroom. Seems to be glowing blue. Um, you're guessing that this is some, you know, some of the flora that has... It's underdark flora. It has adapted to living in this environment, giving off this aura. You're not sure why exactly it does that, but that seems to be what it's doing. Um, Evolution. <laughs> is the mushroom Life edible? Finds a way. Is it edible? Um, mushrooms, yeah. tough, mushrooms are tough to tell, man. It's like 50 50. <laughs> I will not taste it. <laughs> can I, can I, do a check can I walk not loud up behind the rest of them? If you're trying to, you trying to stealth or just move up? Just move up. All right. Yeah, you can walk <laughs> up on them. I'm sure if I tried stealthing, I'd probably make a lot of problems. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, said... what did you say, Steel Scar? Did you say you were gonna like poke it or something? Uh yeah, I'll poke it with my sword. Okay. You poke it, and it kind of just kind of sways as you hit it, and kind of goes back to where it's its resting place. So does it feel like in like? Like, when I poke it, does it feel like a regular mushroom if I were to poke it above ground? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Could I use my nature check that I roll for that, or the it, one roll again? It seems to be, yes. It act, seems to act like a mushroom you have encountered um, on the surface. It's pretty big. Um, it probably comes up to about your waist, um, and it's kind of a collection of mushrooms. It's not a singular mushroom. Um, but, yeah. So All right. So, um, I... I want to perceive this room and see if I see anything suspicious, like on the ceiling, on the walls, or whatever. Uh, so you, you can make another perception check to really give the room a once-over if you'd like. Perception. Come on, die. Huh. Ooh, 19 plus 3, 22. Okay. Um, nice. So the ceiling, if you're looking up, it it's pretty dark, but you can see just kind of like some... Um, Let's see if I can get it right. Slag. Stalactite? Slag, well, one of them's on the Slag ground. Tights. Slag Slag tights. Slag tights. Hang, stalagmites are on the ground. There you go. Yeah, Stalag tights hanging from the ceiling. There you go. Uh, they're not super big, just small stalactites hanging around up there. Um, and, you know, you see the water. Uh, you can kind of see things moving about in the water. Uh, you might have to Ooh. get a closer look to see what's there. Uh, but you see some movement in the water. Uh, but yeah, you just see the path over here and then this kind of walkway. So there's the path and there's like this walkway over here above the water that's kind of disappearing into the nothingness. All right. So I'm going to, if I push forward, would you say like this little stream is like shallow or does it come up to a certain length in our yeah, body? That, that's pretty shallow. That's like ankle deep. It's not, okay. it's, that's okay. not deep. It's, it's a little deeper in the pool, but that, that stream is not deep at all. But it's the water is heading that direction. So it's going like, would you say it's going like down, like an incline? Yeah, and then it's head, it's falling off. It's the maps. It's bigger than it is on the map, or the map is bigger than it actually is. But it's falling down, yeah, that direction. Kind of like a waterfall. Yep, not a wa oh. not a giant waterfall, but yes. Would you say it's something like where salmon fish would like jump up it oh. <laughs> to breathe? Uh, it. It seems like it's a decent drop. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right, so uh, I guess I'm going to start pushing into this corridor and see okay. what I see up ahead. All right, uh, so continue. Yes, sir. Let me make sure it's stream still good. Okay. Should I, I want to see it make, right? make, like, push forward and make... Just enter so the tunnel goes this way, and then it breaks off and makes a bend around here. Yeah, I want to push forward and just kind of perceive what I see up ahead, okay. make sure everything's in the clear before I tell the guys to follow me. 
I mean, yeah, this tunnel looks similar to the one that you, when you entered into the Underdark first. Just kind of like moist and you know, just some moss and stuff growing on the sides. Yeah. Um, How deep is this waterfall? Like, are the water around so the waterfall? So it's not a huge waterfall, um, but it's, so the, the pool of water is, just, let me see. Uh, DM question. I believe that's are, about waist deep. Would our passive per, uh, perceptions mm. detect anything in that room by any chance? Uh, if your passive perception's high enough, if there's something there. Okay. Uh, then I, I mean, I have a 10 passive perception, so I don't think that would help. 50 50. <laughs> I have 17. Wow. Wow, really? Damn. I have 15. Yeah, nice. I'm very passively perceptive. <laughs> I've got a nine. <laughs> uh, Woo! All right, but yeah, like, I mean, it's like Levy's is like he it, when he tries, he gets nervous. <laughs> but if he just doesn't think about it, he yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What like, do you think about the term? I don't know. Exactly. Uh, all right, Steel Scar, so do you want to move forward down this path? What do you see? Uh-huh. Yeah, I want to move forward and like okay. perceive our surroundings, making sure everything is like in the clear. Um, I'd say you don't need to make another perception check. But so you see that the tunnel um, turns around and kind of bent over and you're seeing the walkway that you saw ahead. Um, and you can see that it kind of continues down. It makes a quick um, descent, right? So in this ahead, area? Yeah, so go ahead and go back to here. All right. Oh, not there. Over here. Actually, that's fine. Um, go ahead and make a do, 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 acrobatics check. Oh, no, but I'm pretty good at acrobatics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 20, not natural. 20. Okay. Nice. So, Steel Scar, as you go walking across this bridge, um, you didn't notice the that it seemed like it had... Some of the water has kind of gotten up here, and you can see that kind of moss and stuff has kind of grown over this walkway. Um, so as you're kind of going, it's pretty slippery, and you begin to kind of, whoo, you are able to steady yourself as you're going across. Um, as you look down, and you just see kind of the water kind of disappearing into the darkness below you. Um, but you are able to make it across the walkway. Awesome. And I just tell the guys, guys, be so, careful. It's pretty slippery down this way. So, Elamir, you see as Steel Scar goes across and almost loses his balance, but seems to make it across. Can we see that walkway from yeah. where we are? So you guys see okay. Steel Scar going across and almost fall as well. <laughs> Whatever you do, <laughs> don't fall. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I tell these guys. Hmm. Okay, I follow. Ditto. All right. I, uh, what, what's off to the bottom? Um, so it's just the water. Just Continues? Kind of, yeah, it just kind of disappears below you here. So you can see that. Okay. It just kind of disappears. So would you say this is, like, so that area on the basically, waterfall? Uh, yeah, it's not super big, but basically right... Sorry, I'm having to switch back and forth between the tools. So right here is a wall. So basically as you're walking across the pathway, there's a wall to your side and the water's just going below the pathway. So you can't like really see over here. You're just mm -hmm. kind of looking through the crack between the walkway and the, the wall to your side. But I could fall off into the water is what you're saying. Yes, you could fall off in this direction right here. Okay. But there's a wall to my bottom. Yes, it's not right. It's not like right up against it. It's a few feet away from the Oh, uh, gotcha. Um, in that case, Steel Scar, I'm going to throw you a hemp and rope, and you're going to help us because I don't want to swim. <laughs> That's fine. So uh, is there anything we have to uh, do I have to do to try to catch the rope? or? Uh, no, I mean, throwing and catching a rope is pretty simple. So All right. I'll say, Elamir, you go ahead and pull out your rope and toss it across to Steel Scar, who catches it. And uh, are you just wrapping, you just holding on to it yourself, going to latch it onto something? No, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to it and kind of like wrap it around my my uh my okay. waist just to give myself a better leverage with it. And Elamir, what are you doing? Are you holding on to it right uh, yourself? Yeah, well, I'm more just like kind of leaving the slack at the end of Casimir, okay. and then yeah. just using it as like a guiding rope. Gotcha. Okay, so you guys are just pulling it taut. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Elamir, go ahead Take and make point. a uh, acrobatic check with advantage. 
Ooh, nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good thing we got advantage. Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen. All right. You're able to make it across the uh, water way hey. thingy without any trouble. And then who's next? I'll go next. All right, Levin. Yes. Me. Same thing. Yep. Acrobatic check with advantage. Keep it. Uh. Eighteen. Eighteen. All right, you're able to make it across as well. You like grab onto the seal scars, get to the other side. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I grab them and I. Me. I like. I'll grab them and I. I'll make sure to pull them towards me once I get, have a. All right. So Levy makes it across. Casimir, you're up. Oh boy. So okay. How are you so gonna, are you gonna wrap it around yourself? You gonna hold on to it? What are you doing? I'm gonna wrap it around myself. Okay. And tie a standard just quick knot. Okay. Go ahead. And just in case. Quick, quick dex check just to see how, how good your okay. tying skills are. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll brace myself as he's doing that just to get ready in case of anything. Like I'll like plant my feet firmly on the on the ground just to make yeah, sure I'm just kind of like I, holding it. Yeah, uh, thir thirteen nat one. What? Nat one, so thirteen total. Oh well, mm -hmm. no, twelve, two. Wow, <laughs> I keep looking at the score. <laughs> I was so confused. Nat <laughs> one, total of two. Like, wow. How high is your dex? <laughs> <laughs> Completely broken. Oh, no. Looks like a reroll. Right, so you, you <laughs> wow. it's a little dark, and the light on your helmet, it just, it, it's not working for you. See, so you, you think you tie a decent knot. Okay. So, uh, wow. go ahead and make an acrobatic check as you <laughs> make your way across. Or if you don't feel the knots good enough, you could certainly hold up. Okay, so I rolled the 19 plus 1, total of 20. Okay. There you go. Uh, as you walk across, the rope just falls down around you, <laughs> falls on the ground. The knot didn't hold, but you're able to make it across. I uh, do my best to ignore the rope and keep <laughs> striding strong. See, so a seal scar you watch as the rope just falls away from him and he keeps walking across nice I, I, nice tie skills there buddy <laughs> what the, furiously so uh with everybody across safely i'll like undo the what the how i i'll undo the rope and i'll just hand it back to elamir okay cool all right wow. good thinking right there man you are a smart man right that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> right, so you guys, so it makes a quick descent there. It suddenly makes a pretty steep um, descent down right here, um, and then it turns, and you see another room ahead of you, right there. Um, so uh, go ahead and make a perception check, steel scar, to see what you can see from where you're standing with the lights you have. Perception, yes, like sir. Ooh, nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, so I'm gonna say you're, you've already moved up. You're peering into the room. Um, yeah, I'm peering. I'm peering into the room. Yep. So again, you're seeing the light blue um, glow. Uh, you see a large rock in the middle of the room, um, and yeah, just the faint blue glow. You can see some mushrooms kind of scattered about, and you see two um, pathways in this room. All right. Um... Hmm. I like peer into the room. Uh, does does uh, the rock itself look abnormal, or does it look like a regular boulder that you would find in the cave? Um, it's a large, large rock in the middle of this room. Um, you can go ahead. So you kind of look up, and again, you can see some stalag tights, tights, tights hanging from the ceiling. Um, it, the rock does kind of seem out of place. You don't really know where it would have come. Um, but as you kind of get closer to it, uh, you see some stuff sitting on the rock. Um, and from what you can tell with your light and your dark vision, it seems to be um, bones scattered about on the rock. A lot of bones everywhere. That's an altar, boys. All over this rock. Could I tell, like, if I approach the bones, if it's, uh, like, humanoid? Bones or go ahead and roll a medicine check. Hey, I'm actually good at that. Nice. Uh, seventeen. Okay. Um, yeah, you've had you know experience in war and stuff. You've seen people who have been some pretty grievous wounds. You've seen you know dead bodies, just bones and stuff. So these seem to be humanoid bones. 
We're in a dwarf town, right? Are they dwarf bones? Uh, it is a dwarf town. Um, it is... You don't know. You could roll a medicine check if you'd like, Eleanor. Are they well, sure? I guess I'm asking Steel, Steel Scar. Okay. Would I know if they're dwarf bones? Um, I would say... you. So you take a look. Uh, some of them appear to be dwarfish. Um, in, you know, they're a little shorter and thicker. Um, but not all of them are that. So I'll like I'll put my hold my hand up like to stop like, guys. Um, a lot of these seem like uh, dwarvish uh, bones. There might be something something weird going on here. So keep your eyes open in case of anything. I. Right. I right. I well making your way into the room at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be like right here inspecting the bones. Okay. Yeah, so it's just some of them. It's it's just a ton of bones. You're seeing like, you know, femurs. You're seeing like jaw bones. You're seeing broken bones just scattered about on this rock. Um, you're not seeing any. It doesn't smell like. Um, that's what I'm looking for. As if there were meat on these bones. They all seem to be pretty cleaned off. No rotting flesh or anything attached to them. Levy, do you like spend any, uh, some magic going on here? Levy. Do, uh, <laughs> do, have we touched any of the bones? I'm not touching it. You guys have not ha. touched any of the bones at this point, no. Steel Scar has just kind of peered at them from where he's standing. Um... It's possible to do like an arcana check on the rock to see if there's anything like magical about it. Okay. I don't know. If that's if that's. A I thing. got a staff you can poke it with. <laughs> I'd like to use uh, divine sense if I could. So just detecting good, evil. So any celestial fiends or undead within sixty feet. Okay. Um. So, Levy, go ahead and roll your thing. Uh, Casimir, while he's doing that, so you're able to open up your senses around you. Um just seeing if you can detect any like you said celestial fiends undeads um you do not detect anything of that nature cool 17 17 um you don't see any you don't really see magical purpose for this really um arcana wouldn't let you really see if it's magical so much as if it would help you determine if maybe it was used in some sort of magical um, incantation or something like that. But no, you're not really seeing any magical purpose for this. None of the telltale tell -tale signs of magic use here. It doesn't really look like it's used for anything magical. I don't know. Do you want to poke the bones? We can poke the bones. <laughs> I touched the bone. Okay. So Seal Scar, you reach out, hesitantly as your finger just gets closer and closer, and you eventually just touch the bone, and it kind of like moves over where it is and kind of settles back in its position. Does it feel normal, like a normal bone? Um, it's tough to tell because you're probably wearing gloves, but from what you can tell, it seems relatively normal for a bone. Well, more or less, I, what I'm trying to ask is, is there anything suspicious that happens when I touch the bone? To be triggered an Indiana Jones trap. <laughs> yes, a giant boulder. <laughs> it starts to roll out. <laughs> uh, no, nothing seems to happen when you touch the bones, other than it again just kind of moves and falls back into place. Uh, do, is, is is it brittle, Steel Scar? Uh, it feels normal to me, like a norm. If you grab the normal bone, it, nothing's out of the ordinary here. I mean, of course they're bones, so that's out of the ordinary in itself, but. You know what I mean. You can certainly inspect some of the bones if you want. I'll do. I'll do that. I'll inspect okay. them. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Investigation. Ooh, eighteen. Nice. Minus. Man, you got one. getting good rolls tonight. Minus one. Seventeen. Minus one. Okay. Seventeen. Uh, so yeah. you're able to look, and what you see um, on the bones as you're kind of looking it over in the light, that you're kind of like sticking it up to Levy's head and moving it around. <laughs> <So you're laughs> Uh, I'm like, when I'm playing with the boys, I'm like, I, I touch it to his forehead, and I'm like, uh, pass out. 
Pass out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems like yeah, these are bones. You are noticing um, some like looks like marks on it. Uh, what what you can kind of deduct from your roll there is they seem to be bite marks of some sort. Um, like they were maybe these bones were gnawed on or something like that. Um, but other than that, that's really all you're saying. These are bones. They seem to be relatively old, um, but they do seem to have bite marks on them. Uh, I look at the group and I'm like, I can see bite marks on here. Probably these people were eaten or something. I'm just saying, I don't know if it's true, but I mean, what kind of other explanation would there be if there's uh, like teeth mark on these bones? Is this like a monster's dinner table? <laughs> uh, I personally couldn't tell you, but what I can tell you is that it looks like with the bite marks on these bones, it looks like these people were eaten. Uh, let's hope it's not any of the people we were sent here to find. That would be most unfortunate. Less money for us. <laughs> well, while, while exactly. I agree with what you're saying, he did say if we did bring corpses back, we would still get something for it. <laughs> These are bones, not corpses. They can That's bury the problem. bones and at least have parts of the bodies. Well, uh, I do have this bag of holding if anybody wants to just load them up. I load them up. Uh, All right. I don't really have a purpose for this sure. bag. I load them up. the bones. Yeah, I'll help. All right, so you guys just start clearing the bones off this rock. <laughs> Elamir's just sitting there, like, holding the bag open, and you guys are, like, doing the thing where you spread crumbs to the other table and just push them in the bag. <laughs> Eventually, you guys start throwing them over to you, and you're, like, catch, ha, 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 catching all the bones. Um, takes you a few minutes, but you guys are able to clear all the bones off this rock. Um, there were probably about quite a few bones. Um, nice. Decent amount that you've thrown into the bag. All right, cool. So I tuck that away. <laughs> All right. My bag of bones. <laughs> bag of bones. <laughs> Gotta get some meat on those bones, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I look, I look at the group and I'm like, well, we can go east or we can go west. So what path should we take? West. The pioneers. Well, with with him saying that, I guess I'll push. You want to go this way? Yeah. Okay. He spoke up right away, so I'm just. It's like in through. school when the teacher says, "Is everyone done?" and one person says yes, and they're like, "All right." Nobody <laughs> else did anything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So you guys start making your way toward this way. Um, D path goes forward, bends down. Here. Oh, let me make sure it's still on stream. Nope, we're going off. Let me fix the map. There we go. Sweet. Okay. Um, and then you can see it makes another turn right here. And it seems to open. You can see the faint blue glow once again coming from that, down from that hall. So I'll push to up to right here before the curve, and I'll like kind of like peek on the side to try to look forward without actually exposing okay. my whole body to see what I can see. Another perception check. Oh, yeah, that'll be a two. Okay. Uh, so looking in, um, I'm going to say just based on your angle that you're at, um, here's what you're able to see. Uh, oh, God, I keep forgetting to switch to the reveal areas. So you can see... This. So you see some more mushrooms. You can see like what looks like some piles of rocks. Um, and then you can also kind of see um, that area. So you see more mushrooms and you see another, looks to be another entrance up here. Uh, but that's what you can see from your angle, just peering around. All right, so I'll slowly push to the mouth of this entrance here. Okay. 
And so <clears throat> kind of like signaling to the guys to like kind of like push him behind me and yeah. and stay there. So what you can see more of is seems to be a large pile of rocks in the corner. Uh, you're seeing some stalag tights, mites pointing up right yeah. there. Um, so that's what you can see up there. Uh, yeah, and then just another entrance or another pathway up ahead. All right, so I'll, um, with the crew behind me, I'm going to kind of like push up around here. Okay. And now that I'm fully in the room, I just want to look around, see if there's anything suspicious going on or anything out of place or anything that seems weird to me. Okay. I'm going to say you've already wrote a perception check for this room, so what you rolled is what you get. So you look Fair around, enough. You can see some <laughs> stalag tights hanging from the ceiling as well. Um, these seem a bit bigger than the other ones. This cavern is a little taller, um, bigger room. Um, All right. That's what you can see in here. All right, um, fair enough. Um, south, kind of, and like look around these rocks areas, kind of like peek around them and see if anything's like hiding or anything like that. Yeah. So you can I don't really trust like rock formation. Sure. I mean, it's not like a wall of rocks. That's just a thing. It's just kind of like a collection of rocks sitting there. Um, like but you can peer piles of rocks. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it's stacked yeah. in any particular way. It just seems like they've kind of fallen from the ceiling kind of thing. Um. So kind of like, I guess kind of go over here and just kind of like check behind them and make sure there's nothing like going to jump out at us. Okay. So you kind of like walk around this kind of collection of rocks and you're like waiting to see something and there's nothing seems to be behind there. Oh, sh <laughs> I don't trust rocks, guys. I mean, remember earlier? <laughs> I'm assuming it's been more than 10 minutes. Uh, at this point, I would say, yeah, it's probably been about past 10 minutes. You guys have been peering, making your way through here. Especially with moving all those bones. I'm going to boop Levy on the nose and just say, it's okay. We got you. And per <laughs> cast protection from evil and good again. <laughs> okay. I know he's a little scared of the, <laughs> the caves. All right, Levy, you feel as the spell just kind of oh. washes over you. Oh. <laughs> so now he's no brain drain. drain. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. What would you, what would you guys like that means to do? I can go first. <laughs> he just starts strutting through the room. I'm yep. good. Um, just gonna like, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna keep stealthing because you know. Okay. Right, I this a wall here. Stop I assume moving. we're not seeing this wall um, right here. Stop moving, everyone. All right. As you guys are moving around the room, kind of talking, um, you hear a slight noise from above. Um, <laughs> as suddenly. You guys are all hurt quite bad. Give me one second. We get hurt. We're all hurt? You, your emotions are hurt now. I'm sorry. I'm going to see what happens here. <laughs> I'm here. It looks. The end's rolling dice. Levy, what's your AC? Uh, bad. 15. 15. Okay. Just making my way through. Casimir, you're like at 19, didn't you? aren't you? 19. Okay. Elamir, what's your AC? 16. 16. Seal Scar, what's your AC? 17. 17. All right. Um, you guys all hear a noise. Um, Steel Scar, Levy, and Casimir, you're kind of able to react quick enough as you just kind of like you know, move to the side for a quick second as this large just thing just smacks into the ground right next to you. Um, Elamir, you're not as lucky uh, as the... You're going to take... Sorry, I got to track my stuff here. One friendship damage. I'm no <laughs> friend with that thing. Yeah. 
as you take 14 points of piercing damage. <clears throat> oh, boy. That's fine. And the... <laughs> Sorry, let me do this real quick for everyone. Let's make this easy. As the creatures that fell on you all seem to smack into the ground and let out a... <laughs> as they hit the ground. Um... At this point, I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh no! Hey. The battle music. Where is it? There it is. Battle Shoot. music. Battle I music. I missed my dice tray. How do I miss a dice tray? That's pretty bad, man. Not gonna lie. Ooh. Oh, All right. Um, Are the monsters on the grid? Oh, did I reveal them to you? My bad. Nope. Nope. I was going to, and then I didn't. No. Invisible enemies. I mean... Rip. So they are currently on top of you, but let me... Um... Sorry, I'm going to move your guys for a second. So I can move them to the side. Since that one missed you... That one missed. That one missed. Elamir, that one's still going to be in your space for right now. Okay. Because you basically just got hit. Um, all right, 25 to 20. I got 20. Okay. 23. Oh, nice. I got 20 as well. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Elamir and Steel Scar both got 20. Mm. Uh, I think Elamir might go before me because he probably has a higher dex than I do. What'd you get, Elamir? You got a 20? Yeah. Okay. Casimir, what'd you get? Three. <laughs> Apparently, I just fell asleep after stepping out of the way. <laughs> All right. Um, you actually stepped away to pick up a rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, look at the rock. He didn't even look at he just, it. Like ducked as it like went right past him. Just, um, just standing there staring at a stone, like, oh, that's right, cool. So you guys, as you look around on the ground, you see these large kind of creatures. They look like their skin seems to be pretty rough and almost rock-like, um, and they look very similar appearance to some of the stalagmites you saw hanging up on the ceilings um and but you do see on the front you see kind of this big bulbous eye that just kind of like starts looking around everywhere and then on the front you're seeing like these kind of like piercy looking things um as the first one to act is levy what you like to do cool um I would like to cast Bane on, like, all three of these okay. that are, like, near me. What kind of thing is that? So, like, those three. I'd like to cast Bane on them. So, I need a Charisma saving throw. Okay. From all of them, it's a DC of 15. They're so charismatic, I can tell you that. Uh, 15, you said? Yes. Okay. Fail. Yes. Fail. Fail. They all fail. Let me give them a little... Cool, so they all lose a 1d4 every time they get a... Uh, to roll for a attack or saving throw. Okay. Sorry, I was updating. And then... Um, it does seem like... I am to going to... What? I said it does seem like the fall hurt them. Elamir is actually going to move this guy. The fall seems to have hurt them. Hmm. Okay. And then um, I'm going to give some uh, bardic inspiration. I'll give it to uh, I'll give it to Steel Scar. All right. What do you say? Just be like hit the war bongos on the side of my my side of my hip and give it to him. And then I want to try and get away from these guys cuz I don't really like to be in okay. melee combat. Uh, those two So I Yeah. But they're also Bane, so that's always good. Um, well, why does this one get an attack? Because he fell on Elamir. Huh? Yeah, you didn't move that one back. He's on me. Yeah. Sorry, I'll move him back. There you go. Yeah, he was supposed to be there on you. Go. The one, too. The one will get an attack on you. So only one should get an attack, Hold right? On, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of want to move off like to the corner. I'm going to look something up real quick. This 
I just noticed something about this creature. I need to see something. Oh, come on, load. All right, go ahead and try and move. Okay. Uh, I'll try and move. All right. Just you move and you expect the creature to attack you, and it doesn't seem to do anything other than just kind of lay there. Cool. <laughs> I'm one, two, three, four. I moved this far away. I'm fine with that, like 20 feet away. And that's my turn. All right. Next up is Elamir and Steel Scar. So Elamir, you have the one. It's like laying at your feet right now. Oh, it's not like on me. No, no, no. It's not like it. Basically, when it fell, it hit you with its um, tail, which is like sharp. In point okay. Eight. Um, what I'll do then is I will make an attack with my short sword on it. Okay. And I'll try to stab its eye. And that is a 23. 23 is a hit. Okay. And only five damage. If you want to use your bonus action for your... Planar warrior thing, you can. Uh, I was actually going to use a bonus action to Misty Step over here. Okay. That's fine. And then uh, my second attack, I'll shoot an arrow at the same one. Okay. And that is a 28. That's uh, to hit? I'd hope so. That's a hit, yeah. <laughs> and 10 damage. 10 damage. All right. All right, uh, Steel Scar, you're up. So the one that's right here in front of me, mm -hmm. I'm gonna slash at it twice. So let me roll both attacks right away. So that'll be a, a 23 and a 19 both to hits. hit. All right, I'll roll, let me roll damage for each. So first damage is a uh, 12 for the first one. And the fourth. as you well as you hit the creature with your first attack, it you just slash it right in half as it just lets out a, and just kind of like falls over or rolls over dead. Okay, well, so you can attack another one with your second attack. Then I would just move to this one here. All right. Do you want me to re-roll it? Uh, no. What'd you get? Uh, oh, it was. That's a hit. Okay, so it, the second hit was 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage on the second one. I'm sorry, how much? 13 damage. Same thing, you hit this one and it just expires. All right. Jeez. Let's have nice. it. it just rolls over and dead. Well, um, since, um, since I killed a creature with my attack, could I possibly move here and attack once again as a bonus action? I would say yes. All right, let me that's roll my... Your, that's your thing when you kill one. Yep, let me roll. I mean, I killed two, but I only hit once. So let me roll again. Let me clear them all out for you guys. Oh, 1926. Hit. All right. Oh, double sixes. That's... Uh... Nice. Yeah, that is six uh, damage. Uh, again, you just run up and you just... <laughs> <laughs> you guys watch as Steel Scar just is like shouting as he's running. Ah, yeah! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> just carves his way through three of these creatures that just seem to be worthless pieces of trash. <laughs> and, jeez, uh, that is done. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for my turn. Oh, wow. Gosh, that's amazing. Okay. Right, um, so there's one left. <laughs> it, it's turn. And it attempts to move this direction. Casimir. Oh, no, it's still in your range. So it. Yeah. You see it just I, kind of starts I to slowly. You, you do get an attack of opportunity. It just seems to slowly move. Oh, away. my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a nice. He's going to get all of them. 
<laughs> That's nice. <a> nice. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, what's the damage? I get to roll ones. Oh my god. Uh, so 14, <laughs> uh, 10, 20, 24 damage. <laughs> How do you want to do that? <laughs> it explodes. He just took out all four. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, how are you gonna do it? Oh my god! Remind gosh. me not to go on his back. So you don't I need go... a tank when everything's dead. <laughs> so I just go and slash it in half, and as I, well, as soon as I slash, I like, tw I, I twist my sword around and I, I, I put it back in, and then as soon as it goes in, it just, you just see it pff, split in half. Oh god! Like okay. the anime uh, thing where it just <laughs> you cut down. I look at the four corpses. I look at him. I then I go. Hey, look, I found a rock. <laughs> Casimir hasn't even noticed what was going on. God. Oh, my, oh my God. God. I can't believe he just did that. Oh. I mean, they died in what, six oh. seconds? Yeah. He killed all four six of them seconds. in six seconds. Oh, that was the oh. best. That was the best ever. I swear. That was beautiful. Oh Guys, where did they all go? I blinked. <laughs> found a rock. I like to imagine that Casimir had absolutely no idea what was yeah. going on. He just... He like, yeah, it's, it's straight up. Ca Casimir did not notice anything. He picked up a rock, casually stepped to the side, and thing plopped. <laughs> and as he's staring at the rock, this guy goes and kills four things in less than six seconds. Like, oh, God. hey guys, look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I miss something? Oh, God. Amazing, man. Oh, my God, this is the best ever. <laughs> <sighs> Beautiful. Oh, man. All right, you guys all stand in <laughs> absolute bewilderment <laughs> as Steel Scar has just eliminated all four creatures in a matter of seconds. Um, so yeah, that happened. <laughs> I'm gonna follow at a distance now because I'm afraid of Steel Scar more than I am yeah. this dungeon. Oh god, that was amazing. Steel Scar is just going to automatically succeed if he ever wants to intimidate me. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like, oh my god, god I'm terrified. I look, I, look, I look at everybody like, guys, is everybody okay? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're okay. Thumbs up if you're okay. <laughs> I give a very weak thumbs up. <laughs> just, it's like shaking, like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah bud. <laughs> I'm glad I got out of the way. Oh, like... God. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay. So yeah, you guys see these creatures are all just been split and cleaved in two, just laying on the ground. Worthless. Um, can I uh, try to, I don't know, nature, figure yeah, out what could, these are? You can take a look at it. <laughs> at their corpses as I reassemble them. Go ahead and roll nature check. Uh, that was only an 11. 11. Um, if from we can tell these, they, um, just kind of like looking around and kind of poking it, the lower half of its body seems to be pretty rock hard. Uh, that's the piece that seemed to maybe have impaled you with, uh, and <clears throat> the rest of it just, I mean, kind of fleshy. Um, but yeah, the eye has been glazed over, it's dead. Uh, it seems to be some creature that lives here in the Underdark. I mean, not super familiar with the Underdark, so you're not sure what it is, but... Yeah. Can, can I uh, can I look up at the ceiling and see if I see any more? Oh yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. Uh, you can see where it looked like some stalagmites were hanging or now missing from where you guys were before, or what you saw before. Yeah. Um, okay, and then can I like check in, in like kind of like look at the stalagmites that are up there and just be like, any more of them <laughs> maybe? Uh, good roll perception. Uh, that would be a 18. 18. Um, well, you can tell you just see some stalactites. Stalagmites. Cool. Tights. Nah. Mites are the one on the ground. The ground. Yeah, mites are on the ground. Ah. Tights hang from the ceiling. Right. They hang tight or stand oh, mighty. There yeah. You go. Wasn't yeah. Really creative. I remember it because somebody told me that if mites crawled up your pants, you would put your tights down. 
I, I, I think I'd be screaming first. You missed that step. I mean, oh, that's still pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Um, up. I'm just imagining we're, we're like standing in this cave talking about which ones these are like stalactites or stalactites. Like that's what I'm just imagining as well. Elamir just said that. And like, oh, okay. I'd like to try and yeah, identify the creatures too if I could. Okay, go ahead and roll a nature check. Okay, so I'd like to use luck um, since I just rolled a three before you uh, make a rolling. All right. Yep. <laughs> oh, someone is lucky. Uh, 11. 11. Yeah, you seem to get the same information Elmir had. It seems to be a creature. It lives here in the Underdark. Uh, they seem to have been hanging upside down, waiting for something to walk below them. Um, and they seemed pretty useless once they missed. <laughs> Could I try to look if see if there's any survivors not here in this room by any chance? Like people or creatures? People. <laughs> um, you can roll a survival check. Survival, okay. You're kind of looking around the room, seeing what you can find. You've already done your perception check. That's only an 11. 11? Okay. Um, yeah, you kind of look around the room, see if you can see any signs of anything. You're not picking up anything, you know, tracks or anything that you can really see. Fair enough. What would you guys like to do? Want to move forward? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, seeing as move forward, uh, uh, seeing as how um, I feel like I'm still doing a good job at trying to be sneaky and perceptive, I'm gonna take lead because nobody in this party has told me anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna take charge. I just don't want my brain eating. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna peer down yep. this hallway, whichever way it goes, up or down, I wouldn't know. All right, goes down. Let me, uh, I believe you need to update the, no, roll 28, uh, I'm going to have to update in here a second, so I'll move it down. There you go. Well, since he killed everything in, like, six seconds, he should sit out, still have inspiration, right? <laughs> For the next ten minutes, he does. Oh, yeah, I want inspiration, yeah, that's right, I, I forgot about it. He didn't need it, he didn't need Levy I inspiration. Didn't, yeah, <laughs> he didn't need it. So I want to go down this uh, hallway to try to peer more and per, like try to see if there's since we encountered these stalactite tight creatures, mites. Mites aren't mighty on the floor. Tights on the top, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I was wrong. Exactly. <laughs> you Boom. Your mnemonic device or whatever it's called. All right, so you see that it goes in here and enters a large, large cavern up ahead. So I, I want to perceive and see if there's anything out of line here. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. Do I still have inspiration? Yes. Okay, uh, what was it, uh, Levy? One It's a D... D6, right? No, for inspiration, it's a D8. Oh, perfect. Nice, 22. 22, all right. Thank you, inspiration. Okay, it's just make my cursor looks weird. All right, so you, what you can see is, oh, that's why, okay. A very large room. Um, let me see, what's your, so you have up to dark vision up to 60 feet? <coughs> yes. So up to I should be able to see this area here. here. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Uh, so you're able to see um, that this is a very large cavern here. Um, the ceiling here is much higher, probably about 60, 70 feet, kind of just, just outside your range from what you can see down here on the ground. Uh, you're seeing much larger mushrooms that are giving off the faint blue glow. Uh, you're seeing some piles of rocks around here. You're seeing some slag... tights? Mites. It's like mites pointing up where the ceiling, as well as some hanging down <laughs> from the stalag tights hanging down. Just gonna start seeing pointy things to stop wasting time. <laughs> I love how Scott's like stalag. I gotta get it right. I'm thinking about that. Up, I'm thinking of the mites going up your pants tights and the tights going down. down. 
Um, so yeah, that's what you can see from where you're standing. Can I try to perceive this room, like on the ceiling again, if we can see any You've more? Already of ruined your perception, but from what you can tell, is it's just outside your range of what you're able to see up there. It just kind of you faint like points hanging down here and there, but it's just beyond your dark vision. All right, can I do? Uh, there's something I want to try and do in this room. Then I have this spell. This is the last thing I can cast for the day. Because I cast light on uh, Casimir, right? Yep. I mean that's a that's a cantrip. I thought that was a cantrip, so you yeah, can cast I'm, it. No, no, no. I I don't have any like actual spell slots. Anything that I cast, I can only cast once a day. But you, oh. Yeah, but you know the cantrip light. You can cast as many times yeah. as you want. Yeah, yeah, you know, but there, uh, what yeah, I want to cast in, in this room, mm -hmm. I want to kind of point to like the center of the room. Mm -hmm. uh, how far is the roof, would you say? The ceiling is just, ceiling. Be, it's just beyond your vision. You cannot okay. tell exactly how high it is, but based on the fact that you can oh, see definitely. some tips of the things hanging down, you're guessing it's not too far past that point. All right, so like kind of like right here in the middle of the room, like kind of yeah. upward. I want to cast the spell daylight okay. to make it super bright in here. And what does daylight? How bright is it? It's a it's sixty foot radius sphere of light spreads out from a point you choose within range. The sphere is bright light and sheds dim light to for an additional sixty feet. sixty feet. Okay. If you choose a point of an object where you are holding or one that isn't being worn or carried the light shines from the object and moves with it Com uh completely covering the affected object with an opaque object such as a bowl or a helm blocks the light if okay. any so i want to cast it kind of like i don't know if, if there's any stalactites tights in in range i just mm -hmm. want to cast it on one of those if i can see one okay sure so say there's one probably about right say about right here so I want to cast daylight on that one if I see it like hanging down. I just okay. want to cast it and shine the whole room, make it clear. Great idea. Okay, so I think. Does it have to have be an object? Couldn't you just do a point in yeah, space? Yeah, it can be a point in space. It's a yeah. sixty foot radius sphere of light spreads out from a point you choose. So it's you could literally point at the yeah. center of the room, yes, and yes. there'd be a, a sun pretty much in the center so, of the room. So I want it right in the center then. All right, we're just gonna oh. say it lights up all this. So, bunk. and then, so sixty feet is basically bright, like normal vision, and then sixty feet past it is dim light. So there's sixty feet. So you can see, you can see quite a bit. Yeah, so like I want to put it like right there. So, okay, hold on. Arrange it right there. It'd be really rude if I just cast fog cloud in here. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now you can't see anything. Moonlight. So any like I don't know how much of it is if 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 the room is less than what what we're asking, then we should be able to see the whole room. I think you're able to see most of the room. Where'd you say you wanted to put it? Right here, where we're starting the arrows at. Okay, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, thirty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty. Oh, I did it perfectly. So you can see up to that point right there. So you can see everything. Let me make sure the map is updated. So keep in mind, 60 feet is bright light and, yes. this, um, and then um, dim light as well. Okay. Yeah. 60, and, then, and after that, it's dim light still. For another 60 feet. For another 60 feet. Man, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we basically can see up to 120 feet total. Yep. All right. It's up to you to decide how big the room is. Yep. So this is oh my God, this to see. room is enormous. Oh my Quite goodness! Large room. Huge room. See, you guys watch as just this bright light just appears in the middle of the room and just illuminates everything. Um, from where How you guys illuminating! Are um, there's some residual darkness there. Uh, you're seeing just kind of these large clumps of rock, more mushrooms. Your light is now kind of the light from the mushrooms is no longer in use. Um, but the light that you've cast in this room, you can just kind of see everything from where you're standing. So now that the room is fully lit, would we be able to try and see if any of these stalactites are those creatures again? 
Uh, someone else could certainly roll a perception check to see if they could figure. I it out. mean, I did my roll. If anybody else wants to take, whoever whoever's very perceptive. Sure, I'll roll. All right, Levy peeks. I'm perceptive. I could just shoot an arrow at the ceiling. Just on every stalactite you see. Uh, Honestly, guys, I'm not kidding. Uh, 23. 23? Yeah. Um, all right, so you see a bunch of stalactites hanging down, but um, from what you can tell, none of them look like the creatures. Cool. We look good. I was, I'm probably yeah, wrong, we, but we look good. Ooh, I'm kind of, I don't trust it. Didn't want to do that. I want to. I want to push kind of like right there where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, Scott, honestly, I was not expecting this room to be this huge. <laughs> it was quite a large room. All right. So as you guys start doing that, um, you're walking past these big piles of rocks and stuff. Um, some of them appear to be like tunnels or something into the ground. You hear a voice, kind of shout out, um, from over here, and you can see. Oh, where did my mouse go? Over here. Um, they're like... <gasps> Cart, can you adjust the stream view for this? Yeah, what do you, I need to move it down. Let me move it over to get rid of... You can zoom of... it out a bit, too. Oh, I can zoom out, that's true. You can zoom out. There we go. Um, that's all you're going to need of the room right now, but... You, you, you can see a lot of the room. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know what that pattern is in the... That's weird. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, you can see this... You hear this voice kind of shout out and just say, um, Who, Who's there? I... Who's there? I... Being in front of like, If anybody... Um, follow the voice. We're here to retrieve and save anybody who's been trapped down here. Um, order by, oh shit, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> I have it in my notes. Uh, Silver uh, something. Graston. Yes. Yeah, uh, we, we've been sent by Graston to retreat just... anybody who's been try who's been stuck down here. So try to come towards us so we can help you get out of here. Like, I'm not moving and you would do best to move. Get off the ground right now. Are we saving Piglet? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's okay. No time for jokes. Get off the ground. Off the ground? Uh, okay. Yes. We, um, I'll trust him. I stand on this rock that I'm right by. Um, DM, question. Yeah, stand on the rock. Could we, uh, would it be possible to perceive where the sound is coming from? Yes, it's coming from over here. We can see him. You can see him. He's over. He's, he's over here on the. We can see the guy. Could I make my way towards him? You can. Then I shall. I'll be like right, right. here. And nope, go back. Wait. Go back sorry, before you go, I want right to here. clear you. Go back here. You want to? Right. Mess, you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like. Inspire. So we'll say. Are you gonna inspire him? Go ahead and inspire him. Yeah. So, so you have some inspiration. You got this, Oscar. You're the best. All right, so I'd Here's say inspirational speaking. You'll move probably about right here on your way over to this little creature. So as, as, you get, yeah. as you get closer, uh, what you can see is this on this bright or not bright, dull blue mushroom, um, kind of larger. You see this really dark-skinned figure, um, small, but almost this black, ashy skin, hiding up on top of this uh, mushroom, and kind of has like kind of dirty grayish hair like stop moving i i tell you don't get off the ground and as you're walking steel scar you feel the ground beneath you begin to rumble and kind of shake as um bursting forth from the ground a large large creature steel scar um hmm. Oh no! Burst forth from the ground, and it's going to attack you. Uh, let's see. It won't hit me. I'm <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh man, that's pretty good. All no, right. it's not. <laughs> you never really hear that. Can I actually? Uh, or oh, I'm sorry. Before actually, it resolves, can I cutting? 
Well, so Steel Scar, you actually have to make a save, is what it is. Okay, um, what kind of save? Uh, strength save. Strength or dexterity, oh. whichever one you'd like. Oh. Natural 20, baby! Nice. Oh my God. Okay. 27 total. So, you, as you're walking, you, again, just feel the earth shaking below you. As it's this creature, this huge creature, just comes launching out of the ground, up in, like, 15 feet into the air in arcs, and just lands right on top of you. Um, so it is going, you're going to take some damage. Let's see. Honestly, like... So you're going to take 12 points of bludgeoning damage, half since you succeeded. Um, six. And then... Seven. I already reduced it. Points of slashing damage, because you're able to, you succeeded. Uh, you're not knocked prone, and you're pushed five feet away from the creature. So move in a direction uh, five feet away from the creature. Is it seven reduced, or did you reduce it to seven? I already reduced it to seven for you. Okay. All right, and then move five feet away from the creature. Right there. All right, and like as you hear it come up, like the the figure over here is like, oh no! Uh, everyone roll initiative. Oh, no. Let me roll for the creature. Damn, that sucks. All right, do we have twenty five to twenty? No twenty one. All right, Levy, 21. 21. Yeah. Uh, 20 to 15. Nope. 15 to 10. 13. 10. What do you got, Steel Scar? I have a three. Okay, Levy, you're Hey, first. that was mine. <laughs> first, Levy. Cool. Um, all right. So I am going to cast. I want to cast. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire on it, and it needs to make a Dex save of fifteen. Okay. It rolled an eighteen. So nothing happens. So you guys watch as Levy reaches out and shoots this. What color was your Fairy Fire? Doesn't matter. Mm, purple. Purple light shoots toward the creature as it seems to resist it and shrug it off. Um, would you like to move anywhere? Um, not at the moment, but I'm going to also bonus action. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to bonus action some bardic inspiration on... I'll give it to Casimir since he's like right next to me. Okay. All right. Next up is. The so I'm gonna give you a part of inspiration, and I'm feeling good about the rocks too. So, right, so you can stay there. I like the rocks. All right. Um, creatures up. Yeah. Steel Scar, this giant creature, just with kind of like this plateish armor over its back and these large claws and this giant gaping mouth, just kind of lets out a raw as it's right in front of you. It's going to make an attack. Uh, it's going to be a 19. That hits. All right. You're going to take... Let me show you the right dice. Thirty points of piercing damage. What the fuck? As this creature just clamps down on top of you and just <laughs> bites you, um, and just kind of like you are able to fight it off as it takes. You take quite a beating from this monster. Um, it's gonna stay right there. Uh, next up is Casimir. Yo, that's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, so <laughs> I'm wondering where that leaves you health wise. <laughs> oh my um, dude. Good lord. Okay, let me just say this. If we were playing Pokemon, I'd be like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Okay, so what do I here? Uh spells. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was I'm a trying to think how best I can do damage. I guess I could so I'm gonna misty step to, to, uh, to there. Okay. So, Misty Step, is that, would that be flanking or would that be flanking? That right there would be flanking. Okay, then I'm going to Misty Step to right here. Okay. And then, yeah, what do I got? Uh, Hunter's Mark. Can I, so. So you would have used your bonus action to Misty Step. You could have also yeah. just ran if you'd like, but if you want to do it in style, Misty Step. I'll Misty Step. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll just do a double attack. Okay. Um, Remember, you can expand spell slots yep. to do your. Don't forget your divine smite. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm looking smite. for. And inspiration. And inspiration. Yep. There you go. Remind me of the effects of inspiration again. You can just add to your roll. You have to add a one d eight. One d eight. Okay, fantastic. Two and a and yeah. Everything except you don't your like damage. It. Oh, so it go, does it go into my attack roll too? You yep. can yeah. add it to your attack roll if you miss. Like if you don't think it's high yeah. enough, you can add it. Okay. Well, um, um. I'm uh, gonna add one of. Uh, no, that's still gonna miss. It'll only be like eight. Okay, so I'm gonna use luck to redo one of my rolls. Okay. Okay, oh, so I got. You got a dice tower. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I got a few of them thanks to Mega Fly. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so it looks like only it's like 13 plus 13. Uh, so 16, 16. Two 16s? Yeah. Both are going to miss. Okay. What? Oh, wait, hold on. Actually, you have advantage on the second one. You didn't need Do to I? use luck. So ignore your luck. Roll advantage to the second one because you have flanking. Uh, still 16. Oh, <laughs> good lord. Did you use your bardic inspiration already? Um, you can I'll use, use one of them. Or you just get one from Levy. 20. That's a hit. Okay, cool. <laughs> In that case, Battle Axe, 1d8 plus 3, uh, 7. Okay, and if you want to use a Divine Smite, you can. Um, that sounds like a great idea. Where is my Divine Smite again? So two, two, just two, two, features. So basically, you can expend a spell slot. It's like level 1 spell slot, I think it's 2d8, and then each spell slot beyond that might be is an extra 1d8, I think. I'll expend a level 1 for 2d8. So, 7 plus 4. Uh, Not very high. 11 total. Including the Battle Axe, or that was just the Divine Smite? Uh, including the Battle Axe. Okay, so it, all of your damage in total this turn was 11. Yeah. Okay, alright. So you guys watch as Casimir charges forward and just his, his axe glows as he hits this creature. Um, creature seems fine, though. Uh, next <laughs> up is Elamir. Alright, um... I guess we just take two shots with the longbow. All right. All right. Uh, first one is 26. Is it? Okay. Just four, so that's five. And then I'm going to do my prime or, uh, planar warrior <clears throat> and add seven to it. Okay, so the first 12. shot was, all right, 12. And then second shot was only a 14. That does not hit. And, uh... Can I then run to this mushroom? Uh, you're probably not going to be able to get on top of it, but you can run under it. The, these uh, mushrooms are bigger than the ones you've encountered. These are probably about 10, 15 feet high. Then I'll just walk to the other side of the rock. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, next up is Steel Scar. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so you said I'm flanking with, uh, so so you Casimir, have, right? You have advantage. Okay, I'm gonna attack twice. Oh, first one, 19 plus 7, 26. Hit. Hit. Second attack, natural 20, baby! Oh my, oh my god. gosh, man, you're rolling well tonight, alright. No, oh I did roll a 3, remember you're that. Right. Oh, on well, uh, initiative. All right. So, um, first damage, this is the regular damage, uh, 9 plus 4, 13 damage. Okay. 
Second attack, which is the natural 20. Ooh, I get to re I got double ones, but I get to reroll those. Oof. 7, 14, 18 damage on the second one. Okay. Uh, then you get another attack, right? Because you crit? Yes, I do. So With that crit, that's it. As a bonus action, I get to attack again. Because you crit. Good lord, man. <laughs> Dude! I got a 19 plus 7, so 20 again my gosh uh oh i get to reroll that one. Oh my god i had a one and i rerolled to another one so five four nine damage nine damage man dude so, bet, hold on, hold on, five, time, ten, man. 14 damage no nine damage yeah that nine damage <clears throat> oh nine damage okay yeah, yeah nine right. damage right. and i since we took a short rest right yes you did yes so i'm gonna use action surge Attack twice again, <laughs> so that is going to be a uh, 18 to hit. That's a hit. Oh, nice! So that's the first one. Uh, that is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna and for my final attack, it's going to be a uh, 17 to hit. It's a hit. <laughs> oh yes. Good lord, man. Uh, 14 damage. All right. You, so you guys watch as just the creature, Five the creature hit Steel Scar and it seemed to hurt Steel Scar and he just turns around and just with a just five slashes ferocity and just five slashes just <laughs> go to town on this creature as it's you're just cracking it's it's like <laughs> just plating on its back and it's letting out <laughs> uh, it is still up but it's looking badly injured. Um, next up is Levy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Looks badly injured, you say? <laughs> I think I'll just use a, use my cantrip, just Eldritch Blast it. Okay. So, first beam. That would be a... Yeah, it's it's under a sixteen and a sixteen didn't hit. Uh so probably not. That'd be a yeah, exactly. eleven. Okay. Alright. Second beam would be a, a twenty-four. That's a hit. So then does eight damage. Eight damage. And then I'm going to bonus to action this? healing word onto how do you want to do this? Oh my god, really? Yep. Um So I wanna I wanna conjure up my, my Elders Blast in my hands and just like shoot it forward. It's gonna be like this purple beam that goes it uh, and just shoots out. The beam just appears inside the, the monster, and then all of a sudden it just explodes from with light from it within. <laughs> Alright, so you get to watch as Levy reaches forward and shoots this beam right at the creature and it just kind of goes right in and seems to hit kind of a fleshier part of the creature and it just you can watch as it starts to light up from the inside from the hole and just eventually shh, poof, and just pops uh, and just bits of its flesh go flying everywhere hitting you guys but like the harder exterior of the creature seems to still be there as it just kind of flops to the ground with chunks of meat hanging off of it um, you guys are yeah. out of combat would you say that I just had a JoJo's moment? <laughs> a what? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I have no idea what that is. And I think you're going to judge me for oh not knowing what it is. You've seen it on Reddit, but you don't understand it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Failed you. Um, so this creature is dead. Forget like, this guy over here. Uh, oh, nature check. It. Is there anything I can... Uh, Take off this. That's valuable. Um, good roll, nature check. As soon as combat An eighteen, is over, so once combat is over, I just like basically sit down on my ass and I'm like catching my breath. I'm like, like you're just laying flat on the ground, like your arms like, out. Like I, honestly, like right now, when I yeah, when I like when I go down, like sitting down, I'm like bloody as hell. Yeah. Okay, I think Levy. Did. I'm gonna. I'm. I want to walk over and heal him. Okay. I, since I guess I didn't get my bonus action off, I'm gonna go over and use cure wounds. Okay. At the uh, I guess third level. Okay. 
And so I'm going to give him 3d8 plus, what is it, 4. So my d8, uh, you get healed for four, 18 health. Nice. But I got to touch you for it. All right, Telebi walks so up, touch. touches you, and this light emanates from his hand as you feel a little better, Steel Scar. Um, Elamir, you rolled an 18 nature, you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, bits of this creature of what remains, um, really not much. You notice it does have some larger claws that maybe you could um, take. Uh, its eyes are still in its face. Uh, and then there's just kind of this large, for lack of a better word, carapace. It wasn't bug-like, but just kind of this carapace of hard shell was re- is remaining. All right. Um, I want to try to take a couple claws. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. Let's say another nature check. Okay. Uh, ten. Ten. Um, <clears throat> you're able to get about as you're trying to get some of the claws. You damage some of them as you're kind of trying to separate it from the body. But you're able to collect two of the claws. Okay. They're pretty big claws um, for digging through the earth. Uh, and you feel like you could probably get parts of the carapace, but you're gonna have to break it because it's stuck together and it's pretty, pretty big. Hmm. I wonder if somebody can make a shield out of this. I don't know. I'll forget that for now. Okay. We'll leave the carapace. All right. So you take the claws. All right. Um, would you guys? Like How's their play? friend doing? Oh yeah, your friend. It's the monster hunter. He uh, is he. Sees as he comes down, climbs off the mushroom, and kind of walks towards you guys, and he's like, That was the most amazing thing I've seen. Who, who are you? Why are you here? Are, are you hurt? He's like, we're, me? No, no. I'm, we're, we're here to help. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not hurt. I was just hiding from that creature. Hiding from that? Do, do you know where the others are? are? Who, who, who are you talking about? Um, so this creature, again, as it walks up, it, you guys have not seen anything like this as far as I can tell. Um, go ahead and roll a history check, everyone. Natural one. Nice. Eight. Eight. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Levy and Casimir, um, you guys have heard about some of the inhabitants of the Underdark. Um, this is a Snurf, let me see if I say it right, Snurf Neblin, Snurf Neblin, um, a deep gnome. They have, it looks like a gnome from the gnomes that you've seen, but they have dark, almost black, you know, ashy skin, um, from living deep in the Underdark, and his eyes are kind of like glowing purple, kind of, and he has kind of like raggy hair. Um, he doesn't seem to be hurt or anything, but he is shaken and um glad to see the creature dead he's like hmm. I, I don't know who who you're talking about um i i live here and i was hiding from that creature uh, oh we're, we're here investigating some missing miners missing miners you say um i don't know much yeah. about that but um i it's possible someone at my village may know uh, would you be able to... How far away is your village? Yeah, that. He kind of, um, after he says it, he kind of like, um, he's like, uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that that's a good idea to, to take you there. Um, Why? So I, I'd like to use persuasion and just ask him. We would like to see, just out of curiosity and just to make sure everything's okay. Okay, go ahead and roll persuasion. Uh, I'd like to use luck to re-roll that. <laughs> This is only your second one because you didn't need the it earlier. Okay, so 15 plus 7. Nice. Okay. What is that? 23? 22? 22. 22. Mm-hmm. Um, so he he kind of looks you guys over, looks at the dead creature, and it's like, um, like I guess you look trustworthy enough. Um, my village is not too far from here. I was uh, getting some water. Uh, when I was attacked by that creature, and luckily I was able to hide from it, but um, then you came along, and, well, you seemed to take care of it. 
I guess I could take you to my village. Um, he kind of like looks around and says, like, follow me. And he starts moving this direction. So we'll just... Um, has he said his name yet? What's your name, dude? Is, so you guys, as you guys are following, he says his name is... Uh, uh, Ezrin is my name. Okay. And you... Ezrin? Ezrin. And you know nothing about these miners? He says, I, I personally don't. I've... I've heard talks about some other things that may be related, but um, someone in my village may know more. Okay. All right. So you guys. So he continues leading you guys this direction up here, till you get to kind of this large rock wall that just kind of extends up. Um, and you guys watch as he. In theory, would he fit in a bag of holding? <laughs> no, he's a little too big to fit in a bag of holding. Okay, I'm just making sure. You're going to want to move the stream view. Okay, yeah, I'll fix it. All right, so he a lot of rocks over this direction. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to just represent a cliff face going up. Mm. Um, so yeah, you guys look up and you just see this cliff face. So the whole time you were heading this direction, it was going down. But looking up, you just see this large cliff face going up for quite some time um, and he kind of starts walking up a very small narrow kind of if you didn't see it you wouldn't notice it was there kind of like path that kind of like weaves back and forth um, until it kind of as it gets a little higher it kind of spreads out and gets a little thicker uh, and you eventually start to notice uh, what lair are these on there we go Aha. Huts. So this is probably about 40, 50 feet up in the air at this point that you guys have kind of walked up with him. Um, and you eventually, as you're walking, it you're walking past just what looks like rock, but you eventually notice that there are kind of holes in the rock and it kind of goes back and as you're walking past you can see like small fires in these holes in the walls and um, stuff and you kind of get to a point that seems to kind of open up to a little you can see a little more um, and some more of these creatures kind of start to filter out as the Ezrin's kind of going through and he's like um, sorry I'm trying to get to the right layer here. are we able to fit inside these little layers um, they, they're pretty small you're gonna have to kind of duck and kind of like you know uh, get your way in um, he's like let, let me take you to our, our village leader um, she'll know what to do. Uh, and so he kind of leads you to uh, kind of a hut over on this side, kind of separated from the rest. Um, and he kind of like turns around at you and says, oh, just, just give me one moment. Um, and he kind of enters into one of the, the huts, the hole in the wall. Um, as you guys are just kind of staying there awkwardly and as you gaze around, you're seeing more of these creatures kind of filtering out and looking at you guys. Like, you can tell some of them are female, some of them are male, some of them holding babies. You're, like, seeing, like, kid ones who are very tiny, just kind of, like, looking at you guys. Just these people they've never seen before. Um, I and smile and wave. <laughs> they kind of, like, one of them kind of, like, looks up at you and kind of, like, waves really slowly. It's, like, darts back behind its parent's leg. Um... And then eventually Ezrin comes walking back out and you hear this kind of like rattling noise as uh, another one of these creatures, Swerf Neblin, comes walking out. Uh, this one looks a bit different. Um, so she has t -t -t dark black skin, kind of like this white dreadlock hair kind of pulled back behind their head, um, wearing like a tattered and worn dark green cloak. Uh, and she has a staff that she's kind of walking with and on the end of the staff you're seeing like bits of bone and rock kind of there and as she's walking it kind of rattles like Ch -ch -ch. Uh, and she appears to be pretty old um, and as she looks up at you guys you can tell her eyes are kind of just like glazed over white and she's like hello or oh, hello what brings you here to our village Ezrin here tells me you. Hi, we uh, we we met. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 
um, we, we, we met Ezrin and um, he, he was, I guess, hiding from one of the monsters down there. Um, and we're, we're here looking for some, uh, some lost miners, some lost Storven miners um, from the surface. They, uh, they, they appear to have gone missing and um, have been taken somewhere into the Underdark. She um, kind of looks in each of your directions um, and is like, Please, follow me into my, my abode. As she turns around and just walks into the hut in the wall. Um, and you guys can enter in as well. But you're going to have to kind of duck and kind of like get in there. I imagine it's like Gandalf entering the hobbit holes or <laughs> hobbit houses. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. All right, you guys all going in? Yep. Uh, sure. Let's crowd in. Yep. So you guys all yep. plow into this. Clown car. Sm- yeah, pretty much. Um, you enter in and in the middle is kind of a small, small little fire going and you can see some tables. It's, it's, um, there's enough room for you guys to all find a spot to kind of sit, but, um, ceiling's not very high. Like if you were to stand up, it's right there. Um, but you guys all kind of sit down and as she finds kind of like this chair and sits and is like, um, sorry, let me catch up on my notes. She says, um, you seek miners from the surface who have gone missing. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's that's indeed what we're looking for. Because I may know something Do you happen to know? Matter. Yes, I do know something of this matter. We have noticed some Grimlocks and other unsavory creatures moving through our cavern. More than usual, a few of us were able to spot um, some surface dwellers being dragged along with them. And they were led away. We did not know where. I was able to see where they were going for a distance, but soon I lost my sight to see them where they were going. Do you know which direction they were taken? Yes. They went down the river. Continue that direction. Do you know how many, uh, how many uh, gridlocks and other unsavory creatures happen to be with them? She says they, there have been multiple... Was, was it a great many? There have been multiple sightings. Each group different from the others. Um, but only one or two groups we saw moving had surface dwellers. And they moved down toward the river and followed the river. That is where you would want to go if you wish to find more surf- your surface dwellers. I fear that they have been taken to oh. an old abandoned temple in these caverns. Do you know anything about this temple? She says, I do know a bit about this temple. Um, Let me find my notes. (laughs) It is a long forgotten temple. My people have known about it for years, but we never um, felt the need to go inside or inhabit it by any means. But it seems that something has taken up residence there in that temple. Um, I do not know what. Every time I try and um, use my foresight to see in there, I am blocked. But it is whether it is. You have the skill of foresight. Um, I am given many gifts from my God, but I am able to. My eyes have failed me, but my God gives me other eyes or ways to see. I can see you all right now. I wave. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm catching up on everything. Uh, so she says... Where is it? Oh. The temple is located on the Dark Lake. 
That is where you want to go if you wish to find your surface dwellers. Uh, okay. What kind of danger okay. do we expect? Well, if you're going to follow the river, you'll have to go through the fungal forest, which is an area filled with large mushrooms, similar to ones you've already encountered. Um, that place is, seems to always be filled with different creatures seeking a quick and easy meal. My people have had to find ways to adapt so we don't um, venture far from our ho home here. Many creatures here wish to consume us or enslave us, so we must stay hidden. The only reason you are here speaking with me is because you've done my people a great service in getting rid of that creature that Ezrin was hiding from. Well, we're happy to help. Um, we, uh, we mean no harm, so we just want to get our, uh, our people back, that's all. She says, yes, I have seen that. You come here with good intentions, which is not something you see often here in the Underdark. But if you wish to find your people, like I said, you will follow the river, go through the fungal forest. You will continue to follow the river until you come to a large waterfall. You will turn from the waterfall and soon enter a large cavern. You will want to turn to your right and follow the pathway that continues down until you get to the dark lake. Do these instructions sound clear to you? Anybody taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying. I missed a few things. That's it. All I got is like yeah. follow a river to a waterfall yeah, and something yeah. turn yeah. right, then something continue. The lake. Lake. It says, once you're at the dark lake, there will be a. Um, you will follow the path that leads out onto the lake, and in the middle of the lake, you will see the temple. That is where I have seen them taking these surface dwellers. That is where the Whatever has taken up residence there seems to be calling these creatures. Um, is there any way to get uh, through the fungal forest without, I would say, drawing suspicions or trying to like contest with the things that might want to eat us? She thinks for a moment and she says, unfortunately, there's not... The, the river cuts through that forest and the best advice I guess I could give is that um, don't stay too near to the, the river, because that is where creatures are drawn to, and that's where any hunters may be waiting. But unfortunately, that is a very dangerous place. I'll hunt them back. We will have to keep our wits about us, then. She says, you will. You would do well to do um... your entire time here in the Underdark. It is a unforgiving place. If, uh, would, would you happen to be able to have any spot where we might be able to rest for a bit? No. She says... Before we set out. She thinks for a moment. She says, As I said before, you have done my people a great service. If you need to find rest, we can find you accommodations. Though they may be, may be small for you. But you can certainly rest here before you continue on your journey. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone else ha uh, have any questions? I think she's answered most of our issues we might have. Um, once Levy is done talking to her, I look, I, I, I turn and face her, and I'm like, so I'm pretty much guessing that us going in there looking for survivors and possibly killing any more creatures would be a great benefit to you guys. Am I wrong or am I correct in assuming that? She kind of thinks for a moment and is like, my people have remained hidden here for many years and we will continue to stay hidden. What you are doing, removing these creatures would be helpful to anybody here in the Underdark who seeks to not come to an unfortunate and dark end. So yes, it would benefit us, but well, like I said, we've done well hiding many years. 
and I, I look at her and I'm like, well, um, consider the fact that you're showing us great hospitality. Uh, consider it you doing us a favor for us returning the favor in such matter that we are on the mission to... She like walks forward and eventually puts her hand on your mouth and says, you speak many words. You <laughs> say very little. <laughs> she says, if you're looking for some sort of compensation for doing a good deed, you will not find that here. That's not what I'm trying to get at. I step up and in not so many words say, we'll simply make the Underdark a better place. So, what he, what he looks, said. She looks to you and says, <laughs> that would be a good thing. And she uh, kind of settles back in her chair and um, just kind of says, if you do make your way down there, if you want to help my people, some of them were taken by slavers. If you happen to come across those slavers and you're able to free my people, we would be indebted to you. I'm not sure what we could give you as a reward, but a good deed goes a long way. We'll definitely keep our eye out. She says, I guess that is all I can ask. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, you are. I guess I, uh, I'll turn to the party and kind of be like, hey, do you guys want to rest here for a bit and then uh, and then head off that direction? Yeah. We, ha we had a pretty brutal battle. So. Yeah, I look at Levy and I'm like, I need it badly. Because even though I was healed, I'm still pretty scarred up and bruised. She says, you Should, uh, quite hurt. Let me help with that. And she walks forward. Um kind of takes a step forward, reaches her hand out toward you. Make sure you have the right dice. Where is that? There it is. Did she, did she give us her name or not yet? You never asked her name. No. Um, Don't you ask her name. All right, so you're going to heal for 20 hit points. Oh, my goodness. She just walks forward and kind of places her hand on your are your like forearm um and you feel a little better she and says, as she's doing it like eh, what might your name be huh. i name am steel scar steel scar it is good to meet you my name is shaylin stone speaker i am the leader of this village and i have kept these people safe for many a uh, many years did you say shane shaylin stone speaker shaylin stone speaker says, um, these slavers are Duragar, if you come across them. Well, I'm sure you'll know what to do. The Duragar are evil folk. I look at her and they're like, just how we help S Esrin out, we'll make sure to help the rest of your kin out. It is much appreciated. Now, if you need rest, if you need food or something of that sort please please let us know um, but I believe some of the villagers are let's just say I'm um, very happy to have be rid of that beast would not be surprised if they wish to bring you some gratitude something to show their gratitude um, and she uh, kind of just gets up and says if you'd like to rest here you're welcome to do that I am. I can make my way out in the village. If you need me, just ask around. You will find me. And as as as, as she finishes saying that, like, uh, we we very much appreciate that. And just as how as you're showing us hospitality, we'll return it by trying to help your kid out. As I mentioned earlier, she says it is appreciated. As I said, a good deed goes a long way. Yes, it does. All right, and at that point, she kind of stands up with her staff and kind of shuffles past each of you um, out the door. 
um, as you guys kind of get settled and just kind of catch your breath and stuff, relax, um, you see a few listener fi- first net, I can't say it, man, um, <laughs> whatever the frick their names are, um, they, a few of them come running in, uh, with a platter of some stuff on it and kind of a jug of something, uh, and they kind of set it on the, a table in there, uh, and one of them kind of bows to you and, uh, says, uh, for you, for you, and he kind of turns around and runs away. I drink it and see what, what happens. It? All right. <laughs> uh, it is probably the most disgusting drink you have ever had in your life. Oh, nice. the most disgusting ferment to drink. Um, has a very earthy, earthy kind of taste to it. Um, it just kind of, it, as you drink, you know, it just kind of like hits you in the nose and you're just kind of like, oh, God. Uh, definitely wakes you up, though. <laughs> Can I do, like, a constitution saving throw to, like, pass it off? That's, like, that a good drink. You. Sure. Uh, actually, it'd be a deception. Go ahead and roll the deception. Okay. See how well you can take it. Uh, 15. 15? Um, anyone in particular you're trying to trick? Just the people who served it to us. Okay. Um, I would say... What is everyone's... What's all your insights without making a roll? Unless you want to roll... Actually, if you want to roll to see if Elamir's lying, go ahead and roll. Everyone Passive roll insight. insight, 12. Oh, okay, actual Everyone insight. Go ahead and roll. Uh, DM question. Would I perceive this uh, drink as quote-unquote alcoholic if they're offering it to us? Uh, or not? Like, you could definitely tell if you kind of smell the bottle that is alcoholic yeah would i smell if i smell it would i but i tell that it's alcoholic 16. or not yes you can tell it's alcoholic then i will not roll on that because steel scar doesn't drink okay so casimir what'd you get oh 16. levy you got 16. yep all right you guys can both tell elamir's lying <laughs> no it's like, i swear it's good <laughs> He's like, it's good, Totally guys. drink some <laughs> of it. I don't want to hog it all. Can I tell that his reaction's because it's potent, or that his reaction's because it's bad? A little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, in Elamir, you can see as you ran up to the plate, you see, like, an assortment of, like, mushrooms and just kind of, like, other unsavory-looking foods sitting on the, the tray there. Seems right. like this might be common fare for them to eat, but not for you guys. I, uh, I'll, I'll sneak some of my rations from my bag later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so you guys are going to take a short rest here? Or a long rest, or what do you want to do? Uh, well, um, uh, Dungeon Master, quick question. Yes. I, we, we came into this dungeon early in the morning, right? Like... Yeah. With all the exploring and all the walking, would oh, we kind of have a, a grasp around the time that it would be, or would we be you out of out of with no clue without it? Have a decent grasp of how long it's been, but down here in the underdark, it's really tough to tell. Obviously, there's no sunlight. It's tough to tell how long time has passed. But you're Is guessing there- it's maybe since like you entered the first moment you entered the mine. To come down here, not your initial time coming in the mind, but the, after Levy woke up. Um, it's maybe been about, t- say, hour and a half, two hours maybe, since you guys made your way down here. You were kind of moving slow, trying to make sure you didn't run into any creatures or anything like that. So I'll, I'll just look at the part and be like, uh, do we want to stay here for the rest of the day or push forward and just catch catch our breath for a little bit. I think a long rest would be merited here. Yeah. Yeah, long rest would be Definitely nice. useful. Okay. All right. Doesn't matter what day it is anyway. We're underground like a thousand miles. <laughs> Fair enough, then. I guess we can... We can see what's going on this, in this little village and then tomorrow we'll just head out. All right. 
So you guys all take a long rest. Um, you'll get half your hit die back from any of that you've expended. Get all your spells back. I think that's probably a good spot for us to wrap up this session for tonight. Um, yeah. So that's Brilliant. Episode 11. Steel Scar, do you have something? Woo! Yeah, so, guys, uh, thank you for checking this out. Um, if you enjoy what we're doing here, make sure you follow us on Twitter at uh, at AWA underscore D&D to keep up with any news related to the podcast. Um, if you listen to us on YouTube, remember you can follow us at on YouTube. We are the Goblin Gazette on there. That's where all our uh, streams are posted back on. And you can always check us out on any of your favorite podcast apps out there. Google, Spotify, Apple, uh, iTunes, whatever you want uh, at uh, Adventure with Advantage. Just make sure you follow us. And if you are listening to us on iTunes, make sure you give us five stars and that'll help us. That'll help boost ourselves up uh, on the mm -hmm. iTunes charts. Cool. He did it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. So long. Thanks, we'll everybody. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks, folks. Heck yeah.